A very warm good afternoon to one and all present out here. I, Simran, today on behalf of the Policy Perspectives Foundation, welcome you all to the region. Before moving further with our speaker of the day and the topic, I would like all of you to know, to get a brief understanding about the region. The Richa is a PPF forum to discuss and share views on various social issues and problems of interest with young scholars and activists. The PPF invites budding academicians, grassroots activists, researchers, journalists, and thought leaders to participate in these, in these programs. The initiative aims at promoting better understanding amongst the voices of diversity through deliberations and dialogue and to encourage constructive exchange of views on selected themes and processes. Now, I would like to introduce the speaker of the day, Mr. Dominic Karunesudas. Mr. Karunesudas is founder and chief technology officer at Offensive Defense Cyphertex Consulting Private Limited. He is a technology entrepreneur with over more than 19 years of professional experience in high technology product development, technology commercialization, management, consulting in areas such as cybersecurity, drones, AI, blockchain, agri-tech, etc. He was editor of technology business with the Times of India Group, CNBC TV 18, and Web 18, Indian Express Group. He, he also has a strong foundation in corporate finance, investment banking, merger, acquisition, and fintech. He periodically briefs the PMO, National Security Agency, the Armed Forces of India, Member of Parliament, and Defense Attaches on matters related to applied digital technologies for national and economic security. Once again, sir, welcome to the region. Thank you. Thank you. Can I start? No, sir, I'll let you know. Yeah. Moving on to the topic of the day, which is cybersecurity. In basic term, cybersecurity is the application of technologies, processes, and controls to protect systems, networks, programs, devices, and data from cyber attacks. It aims to reduce the risk of cyber attacks and protect against the unauthorized uh, exploitation of systems, mm -hmm. networks, and technologies, etc. But this was a very basic definition. So now dive into the details. So without any further ado, let's hear from the expert himself. Himself. Now the floor is yours, sir. So you can speak for around 30 to 35 minutes. Please, sir. Great. Thank you. I'll just quickly share my slide. Uh, can you please confirm if you can see the screen? Yes. Great, great. Thank you so much. And thank you for the invitation. Uh, I will give my best to share my thought process on a very, very vast topic. So uh, the way uh, I have thought to present today is uh, give a glimpse of what's happening in the world of cybersecurity and then a uh, few minutes on uh, China and their role in the global scene with regard to cybersecurity is concerned and how that affects us as a neighbor. So uh, to all the young folks out there, this is what happens in the world of internet every minute. This is the amount of uh, IDs and searches and content that is created and distributed and searched for every minute. And uh, this data as well is probably a year or year and a half year old. So uh, this is what is happening and this is driven primarily by uh, the young crowd, probably most probably those who are born after 2000 or 2010. So in that parameter, probably I'm old in front of them, but yeah, this is, this is what it is. Uh, often I get to hear from various people, uh, their fascination for the term called dark web and, uh, deep web and all sort of things. So I just thought of, uh, taking this opportunity to share quickly that what are the, um, jazzy words out there and if you can simplify that for that so 80 to 85 percent of the search that we use uh, using various search engines such as uh, bing or google is surface web and only for those specific searches the output that we get is through uh, surface web the rest of it all is what we call deep web and dark web in deep web there are also a lot of uh, websites which is specifically with regards to academic research 
a bunch of people researchers coming together and creating a website and also a major component of government and military uh, related activities uh, specifically from the advanced nation the rest of it all is what we see the dark web and this is the most fascinating part for those who are students of cyber security or internet research because that's where the real activities happen this is a screenshot of some of the activities that happens in the dark web you get anything and everything on the face of earth you can get any license that you want you can get uh, drugs you can get weapon you can get a lot of other things you can create your own uh, digital identity real life identity passports and all of them can be delivered at your doorsteps all you have to make sure that you create the much needed uh, trust faith in the brother in the hackers brotherhood uh, ecosystem and the rest they can take care of it and also you need to know how to navigate yourself because a lot of majority of the payments is through cryptocurrencies so uh, to guard yourself you also need to know how to keep clean of your own digital footprints otherwise when the agencies uh, start tracking people a lot of people get uh, caught so i want to put some numbers and data on this uh, this is also 2021 data 6 trillion usd per year is the damage caused with cyber crime and the breakup of that unfortunately uh, a lot of data in india is uh, not accurate and there's a lot of uh, clarity required with regards to data that comes out of india so i have taken global numbers or the numbers from the us so this is the idea and with the kind of digital india campaign going on with internet penetration to every last nook and corner of the country this is only going to increase because the aware of uh, awareness amongst people is extremely poor and some of the cyber scam that we see often a lot of time the victims are uh, well educated working professionals who uh, fall into a trap primarily because of if i can use the word greed and uh, shortcut to success so that's where they fall into the trap so now i would quickly take a moment on sharing with you some of the cyber attacks that has happened on india primarily from a china advantage point of view and where india stands and the rest i will leave it to uh, q a uh, almost all of us who read a newspaper regularly are aware of what happened with aims it was an attack that happened uh, on december uh, just last month uh, the it infrastructure or at aims is approximately 30 years old uh, for some reason best known to them uh, they thought it probably is not uh, important or worth to upgrade the itv infrastructure uh, at aims uh, what we call it it is a legacy system and uh, cracking down a legacy system is not necessarily very hard especially when the uh, group of people who have come together has a very clear cut target and they are very focused but because of which uh, as we always say it is a common man who always suffers right so approximately uh, couple of 3 to 4 crore patients is the number that they say i'm sure the number is bigger than that uh, their data were compromised we don't know where the data has gone and uh, the hacker uh, was asking for a ransom based on cryptocurrency again to the tune of approximately 200 crores in the whole process what is uh, assume that approximately 1.3 terabyte uh, terabyte of data was encrypted so typically are in a ransomware attack uh, set of sensitive data is encrypted and if you want the uh, entire data to be decrypted or, and you choose not, that the data should not be lost you need to pay the ransom uh, to the party on the other side and uh, almost always in every single case the transaction is on uh, cryptocurrencies because of various advantages that it brings on the table uh, if you uh, for some of the researchers who uh, 
explores explore the alleys of dark web uh, there has been number of searches happening in the dark web as well uh, to get uh, data points not just from aims but a lot of other uh, data points and similarly there was also a hack on sabdajang hospital but it seen they claim that it was foiled now truth be told none of us know uh, how much was foiled how much of data has gone we only know uh, information based on what the concerned authorities have shared it with journalists and journalists have published it in newspaper or websites similarly uh, in 2020 there was a blackout in mumbai the local train stock market hospitals were without power for approximately 12 to 13 hours and this was again a targeted attack uh, from the chinese side where they injected number of malware into the system uh, and the group is called red echo and uh, the way i see it these are all test cases they are testing the situation of india's critical information infrastructure these are all uh, trailer for the actual film to pass on and i am not sure if the authorities or the concerned organization still understand the gravity of the whole situation because for the past few years that i have been part of uh, cyber security there has been repeated push from me and few others to take care of the infrastructure on the power network because that is going to be the first uh, focus of area for any very massive cyber assault now the part with uh, the mumbai attack was the then energy minister of maharashtra confirmed it that yes there was a malware attack whereas the central government uh, minister mr ak singh says that it was a human error from our side it is not a case of uh, cyber attack from the chinese or the pakistanis now other few cases uh, one case that was not prominently highlighted was the similar power grid attack in ladakh where they took control of the electrical dispatch and grid control and uh, the authorities there did not have control this is a similar attack to what the chinese did on estonia and ukraine it's a copy paste uh, test case uh, again one common thing that i'm seeing here is a uh, incident happens it is reported for a week or two in the newspaper and then everybody forgets about it there is no follow up on what has been the action taken there is no follow up on the fact that if there has been a chief information security officer uh, deployed at aims or the power grid company or uh, for a specific state or a specific city there is nothing of that sort Uh, happening and that to me is quite uh, a factor that worries me because even if we assume that the work will start today it's going to take few years for sure to uh, consolidate all the problem statements and start resolving luckily the same minister who earlier denied the mumbai attack acknowledged that uh, the ladakh attack uh, did happen and then uh, we are trying to look into it few other points we are all familiar with aadhaar uh, without aadhaar number lot of places we don't even have access so the database of aadhaar was also under attack and this is quite critical because then you have access to critical biometric information of indian citizen and it will also give them the access to massive bulk personal identification data and they can come to know with regards to face that who are the people and they can match it with uh, name and face and things like that and uh, most of us in the global uh, technology space are quite aware that the um, chinese artificial intelligence capability is quite superior on par with the americans so uh, i'm sure they are up to something if, if the chinese are doing all of this at different uh, critical information infrastructure sectors different region you have ladakh you have mumbai you have delhi uh, then i'm quite confident with the various pattern that has been going on for the past 5 8 years they are seriously on to something similarly there was also an attack on the drug maker 
and uh, what happened was they wanted to steal the formula for the covid vaccine and things like that and how much of success or failure we are not sure but they definitely tried their best in getting it yeah so similar few more points uh, the manufacturing units were targeted at bharat biotech and serum institute uh, the idea was to extract that intellectual property and then get a competitive advantage similarly the media houses times of india group uh, the holding companies bennett colman and co they were uh, targeted between february to august uh, primarily because a lot of journalists were then writing about the border uh, issues so they wanted to grip a control and the idea is also inject their malware so here there was a malware called winnit so they injected that uh, and as somebody who's uh, been uh, exposed to the working style at times of india cnbc and in express there is not a single uh, security device or a firewall out there to block it so gaining access for somebody into those system uh, will not be very difficult few other points which was not highlighted in the media in tirupur in tamil nadu there was a medical center uh, data was completely stolen and uh, this was identified somewhere in november and uh, the belfast centers uh, index states that uh, the most comprehensive cyber power next to us is china but what is not mentioned or what people do not want to think is how is it that china has reached to the second spot they have really systematically for the past 15 years plus consistently focused and worked on this relentlessly and that's where they are here there is no uh, ifs and buts or confusion on their side they are quite clear of what they want and they they are really focused and some of these agencies or if i can use the word freelance uh, cyber folks who run these attacks for them are backed by the uh, the government in china and uh, they are also uh, given some very handsome uh, remuneration now uh, this is not that the attack is only happening on india uh, from the chinese taiwan is a use case uh, the us also is facing similar attacks but there is no consolidated effort from our side with regards to uh, countering the point there are some agencies in india who uh, are the nodal agencies for this however uh, it's a chicken and egg situation because if you want to strengthen your offensive capabilities you really need to strengthen your defensive capabilities first Uh, the listed critical information infrastructure in india should first ensure that uh, the designated systems are completely secure now uh, i also want to make a point that 100% security is a myth i agree that and the most of the cyber security folks know that 100% security is a myth but we should definitely do set up thing that makes uh, the parties on the other side the attackers their life very very difficult now having uh, a legacy system 30 year old at aims uh, doesn't make sense it, it it's quite easy for anybody to gain access to that uh, like i have mentioned here the aims attack wasn't very sophisticated but it was out open so and these folks who uh, do such attacks uh, are technically very superior in nature they they have all the uh, cyber weapons of uh, malware in hand and penetrating these network uh should be quite easy for that another small point that i would like to highlight here is these are just some of the points that is highlighted by the media because we came to know of it just like uh, open web and deep dark web the real attacks are unknown to any of us as we speak right now probably the data is going to some remote server but it is not yet captured people are not aware that this kind of attack is happening currently probably we will come to know 6 months down the line or one year down the line that there was a massive attack but the real cyber uh, case scenario uh, between two nation state enemy states would be be very silent and keep extracting the data 
regularly, periodically. That's the real success of any cyber attack. And I'm sure with the kind of systems that we have in place and the kind of uh, priority it is given, there are many, many bigger uh, data leaks that we will for sure hear in 2023. Another small data point, uh, as mentioned here, is uh, there were approximately 1.4 billion cyber attacks on Taiwan between 2019 and 2020. Uh, so we need to really sit and introspect what is the amount of cyber attacks on India and do we have a number around it. Uh, the cyber cyber the Chinese cyber criminals have developed a module. Uh, this is also something important, not necessarily directly related to the cyberspace, but there are a lot of, as you must have all read, a lot of uh, Chinese loan apps. The idea is to give uh, or claim that we will give you a job working from home or part-time jobs. And uh, because of massive uh, block approximately 600 plus uh, such apps were blocked. Once that happened, the Chinese figured out we need to figure out some other alternative, innovative way of uh, resolving this. So through various Telegram ID, the scammers were uh, operating this. Uh, when you did a forensic analysis, a lot of them were based in Beijing and also in some other uh, remote islands. And the idea was to defraud victims because after COVID, a lot of people, uh, some of them whom I personally know as well, they were looking at uh, loan as an option. And in one transaction, uh, uh, there was a credit of 5.17 uh, crores on a single transaction, single day. So this is the kind of number that's going on. Um, Approximately, I think 600 apps or so were blocked. Uh, again, I'm not sure of the numbers. Uh, some of the apps uh, that were blocked is mentioned here. And I'm sure even now, there are a lot of apps that is going on, but that is not necessarily in the Play Store. Through a network of uh, people, it's being pushed. Uh, these are the four points I thought uh, we should consider if uh, some of us wants to reach out to the government and see if something can be done and if the government is open to uh, work with uh, citizens of India who have a little better understanding of the subject. One is to identify the attack pa patterns of the Chinese, create a framework, because now with so many cyber attacks in the past 10 years, there should be a in-house uh, intelligence of how this pattern works out. Have we deployed the necessary uh, tools, uh, systems in place so that this doesn't happen again in future? Because repeatedly that we see that even after a cyber attack happens, there is a knee-jerk reaction. We try to resolve it. And then again, after a few months or a year, we hear the same bunch of things. And there is no follow-ups. Uh, we definitely need uh, a head of cybersecurity or chief information security officer at various organizations who is a single point of contact for all such issues. And um, which are the agencies and what are the challenges that they are facing with regards to doing this? Also, we need to further deepen our engagement with uh, countries such as Taiwan, and few other organizations and get case studies of how certain attack was identified and what is it that we did to block that for future references. And I'm not sure if that case study part is worked upon at any level. So all this talk uh, clearly states that cybersecurity is important. But again, I wanted to put a number to the cybersecurity use case. Uh, the global uh, consulting organization says that cross-border data flows account of 3% of global, global GDP, which comes to 2.3 trillion, right? If 2.3 trillion uh, is the amount of cross-border uh, data, and if India is positioned as a global software powerhouse, then can we afford 
to be a victim of cyber attack by our neighbors. And this cyber attack, no matter how much we wish for, will not stop. It will only increase. It's quite, can, it's quite clear. It will only increase. And it's a matter of time that we introspect and see what best we can do about it. Uh, another part for those who want to build a career in cybersecurity, it's a great opportunity for you. Uh, whether it's in India, US, parts of Europe, there are almost 1 million plus job openings for you. And uh, if you have the right skill, then uh, for next 30, 40 years plus, it's a great opportunity. The world number one cyber, uh, the world, world number one uh, software company, Accenture, uh, their report is 125% year on year increase on cyber attacks. And uh, I'm not even sure if a company like Accenture, TCS, Infosys is uh, doing much on that because like again said, when a nation state attacks a system, their idea is to keep silent. The very fact if somebody wants to use a malware is to, in, is to deploy that payload very safely and just keep quiet. Uh, in, in hacking, there is a term called script kiddies. So script kiddies, they want to do the defacement of a website to tell the world that I have this capability. But when a nation state wants to do something, they will never, ever, ever do this. Their only idea is either pull down the grid or steal very sensitive data, like the one that they successfully got at Ames and from Aadhaar database. Verizon is a very large uh, American telecom firm, and their report says that 77% uh, organization are ex expecting increased uh, cybersecurity budget. However, uh, to counter this, uh, there's a world famous cryptographer by the name Bruce Schinner. In his report, he said that most of the American firms spend less on cybersecurity and more on coffee vending machines. So if this is the scenario and importance given at the US, then uh, it's a matter of guess work. We all know what is the budget allocated in Indian infrastructure. Again, some numbers, uh, cybercrime is expected to cross 10.5 trillion uh, globally. And uh, these are numbers, but the only reason I wanted to put numbers is because we have a very, very, very uh, long way to catch up on. Uh, every time I talk to CEO of large organization, they understand the importance of uh, cyber attack, they understand that something worth needs to be done, but they themselves are confused. Uh, and another very important factor is when they want to hire talent, they do not get great talent because there is a massive dearth of talent uh, currently in the country. So this is specific to India number. We have currently 1.5 million unfulfilled uh, vacancies. And this is also an area that I'm personally trying to work upon and uh, resolve. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a marathon. So we just started the journey. Uh, these are some news clippings of uh, opportunities that is available in the market. Uh, the reason I'm trying to uh, highlight this is because a lot of uh, our youth, youngsters who graduate from college, uh, the biggest challenge is they are not getting jobs. Whereas, like I stated just now, 1.5 million jobs are available in the country. The only thing that is missing in between is gaining the skill. If someone is willing to dedicate six months to nine months with absolute dedication and focus, then getting a salary range of six to 10 lakh rupees to begin with is not a difficult thing. You just need to put in that much effort and the rest can be taken care of. And I'm saying this because cybersecurity is not just a sector. Cybersecurity is a space where it has direct relationship with national security. 
it doesn't matter you are working in a bank insurance company fmcg hospital uh, it firm manufacturing unit any cyber attack would mean that it is directly hitting on the economy of the country hence it's very important that we train our youth to take up cyber security as a career and then from there on uh, they will be the best guess of which area within cyber security that they need to specialize in and the small area that i did not mention here is india is going to be one of the largest space with regards to using iot devices currently iot devices are present in your watch geezer fridge tv a uh, few other mobile devices uh, some of the car that is available right now from mg hector to few others are also uh, iot driven with internet inside as we see ahead the usage of internet and iot device is going to massively scale up and that is going to be further uh, threat an opportunity definitely yes but also a threat because it gives that much more opportunity and landscape for the attackers to play with uh this is a typical entry point a uh, youngster can start the career with with a dream to become a prominent chief information security officer for a large organization uh ability to communicate a uh, diverse group of people to lead uh be proactive another reason uh, why i'm pushing this is a lot of young boys and girls that i interact with they are technically extremely good but they find it challenging to communicate their skill sets uh during an interview so that is where we try to hand hold them support them and you know build them to a certain path uh these are some of the specializations that you can focus on when you build a career in cyber security i will leave my email id and some of you who are interested further to discuss on this i would be more than happy to engage with you here one point that i need to bring is this aspect called bug bounty it is extremely critical uh, because bug bounty is a methodology or in other words uh, vulnerability disclosure program every organ large organization today is open to vulnerability disclosure program or in other words bug bounty where a talent can identify a bug in that organization in a certain systematic format report that bug and in and they, the the technical team of that company will identify if it's genuine or not and if it's genuine they come back with a cash award or some goodies such as uh, amazon voucher t-shirts cup mugs uh, letter of appreciation and so on and so forth uh, one of my focus area was also uh, engage with some of the senior government official and influence them to start bug bounty program even at a minuscule level at various government organization because the moment you do that the youngsters will get a little bit of motivation of identifying bugs and at this stage probably the government is not open to cash awards but we can definitely offer them a letter of appreciation youngster would love to get that letter of appreciation because it will add value to their uh, resume and the government gets his job done of getting their bug fixed otherwise getting this resolved will be extremely difficult other part is if you look at the global database of top bug bounty experts india is number 1 so majority of youngsters are really focusing on bug bounty because they make some real good money in dollars so bug bounty is another area that i was trying to Uh, engage with the army navy and air force and they can start with the least critical setup in the beginning they don't even have to open it for civilians they can start within their organization then as they get confidence they can open it up slowly uh, some of us are more than happy to help but but it has to happen from the organization that they should be willing to try something like this otherwise i'm not sure what is the solution to this uh, problem statement so uh to the youth out there you are the first line of defense uh the best way to protect yourself from cyber security attack is don't use internet but that is impossible absolutely impossible so any of us want to use internet then we need to have basic awareness of cyber security so that's it from my side and uh, i'll more than happy to take any questions 
Thank you so much, sir, for your enlightening words. Now we'll move towards the question and answer round. For yes. our participants, the floor is now open. You can drop your questions in the chat box. I believe we have a few questions. Uh, okay. Uh, this is from Kumar Aniket. Are there new emer emerging zero knowledge protocols that can help in stemming the cyber attacks? And there's another question. Is there is a case of government of India investing in developing its own homegrown zero knowledge protocol? Okay, so are there any new emerging zero knowledge protocol? So the protocols are getting developed every passing day. Uh, it's up to the technical folks to figure out where the protocol can be uh, deployed, whether it's to build a new service or a product. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, protocol comes or not. The primary idea is uh, how much of legacy system exists in the government sector, because the private sector will always make sure that they take care of their infrastructure. And also uh, a lot of data now going on to the cloud uh and i'm sure a lot of you have also heard of this new jargon called chat G gpt which is an ai tool and the ai tool is building malware so the whole uh, human element is uh, over number of years will be drastically reduced and the moment a machine starts building malware uh, it's going to be quite challenging for human beings to counter that uh is there a case for government of India investing in developing. Uh, it's above my pay grade, buddy. Uh, you will have to speak to some senior government guys to speak on. So I may not be the right person. Uh, if I can take the next question would be, uh, there's a growing talk on a technology in the domain of, yeah, chat GPT, yes. Uh, in this regard, could you please enlighten? Yeah, so uh, 30 seconds on chat GPT. Uh, so chat GPT is not new for those who have been tracking this sector. Uh, Mr. Satya Nadella, uh, who is current CEO of Microsoft, has been pumping a lot of money and personal time and effort in building chat GPT, uh, the company which is open AI, for the past several years. And so what has happened is instead of putting money directly into this uh, company of open AI, the number one problem for a uh, AI company is having access to massive amount of server space, which is on the cloud. So what Microsoft very smartly did was open up their uh, cloud enterprise called Azure, saying that this much of uh, Azure access you will have. So now your biggest problem state will is resolved. Even now, if you read the deal between Microsoft and uh, OpenAI, the firm, they have opened up further $10 billion ka Azure uh, usage for chat GPT. So um, now here, small thing I want to put is those who are becoming very excited with chat GPT. Uh, and I read headlines like this is the end of Google. That is not the case. It's a matter of time that Google and Amazon Web Services will also come up with their version of uh, chat GPTs. And then it's going to be an interesting fight for all of us. But uh, is there an Indian counter to this? The answer is no. We are users of this product. We will pay for this product, but there is no product such as these uh, coming from Indian ecosystem. So, uh, and yeah, to the last point is, if such intelligent systems like chat GPT, I mean, yesterday I was reading that chat GPT has cleared the bar uh, exam of US and medical school exams of the US and all those things, then obviously it is building itself to become much more uh, intelligent, which means that the malware that they will build over a number of years will be very sophisticated. And for somebody who may not necessarily be a technical graduate, but knows how to use this tool in a very nice way, will get the necessary uh, output. Last would be, uh, sir, how important is this? Is it from national security point of view to first identify the vulnerable organization and systems of strategic significance and organize a massive orientation program for their management with the help of tested exports? So, uh, so a couple of things here, sir. First would be, Let's, let's, let's start the journey with an assumption 
and the assumption is every organization is vulnerable and if the assumption is so then what will we do about it what we will do about is create awareness now the challenge with awareness program sir if it doesn't come from top down approach then an expert will be called they will give a one hour talk uh, the audience will be forced to listen to the concerned uh, outside expert and they go back to their daily lives unless and until it is not a consistent periodic effort could be on monthly basis could be uh, quarterly basis and it doesn't constantly come up in their inbox or mobile phones or some group that these are bunch of 10 best practices that you need to follow on daily uh, basis and also share this with your friends and family if this level of massive awareness program doesn't run it will not work because even for people like us i'll give you a real life example uh, 3 months back uh, my wife vidya got a call from quote and quote uh, gold version of nokri saying that please transfer 3500 rupees and uh, we will make sure that in next 3 days we will give you three interviews now she is aware of cyber security problem because i keep chewing her head but at that instant she forgot about it she came very close to making the transaction but then she realized there is a devil call me in her life so she came and checked with me all i did was this i said you want to pay it's okay you pay but what need to do is can you get two line email from that person saying that i am from nokri my name is this and this is a link to do the transaction and that is where the whole game changed this person started talking to her for almost 45 minutes trying to convince her is ma'am i am genuine but the point is if you are genuine why will you invest 45 minutes it will take less than 45 seconds to drop an email which again proves that it was a it was a case of simple case but then again the point is not that the point is they have a long database of victims and even if they get 10 per day the problem is solved 3500 into 10 it's better than being an engineering graduate you are making good money so yes sir even though sir uh, it's a very challenging process the solution again is only running massive campaigns on awareness till the time the awareness doesn't happen again from top down approach it will not work because low uh, i'm not sure if this is the right thing to state uh, in the forum but the point is we take things too easily we trust uh, person on the other side too easily but the old saying is trust in god but lock your car so trust is great but it is only good as long as your car is not lost next questions uh i am not able to see uh, yeah there's one more sorry yeah there's one more what is the status of the national cyber security strategy conceptualized by dsci in 2020 why maharashtra became the most targeted state in india facing 42% of all ransomware attacks how to ensure the ncipc okay skada how many states so too many questions um, what happened to the dsci report uh um i am a member of dsci my startup is part of dsci incubating accelerating program but the best person to answer on the dsci 2020 would be vinak godse who is the ceo of uh, dsci uh, they are engaged with the government uh, but again dsci is just another uh, industry body the real answers should come from the concerned ministry in the government uh and again if i can take a little bit of liberty using heavy words on strategy and things like that uh, sounds beautiful on a piece of paper and talk but beyond strategy we need to have absolute measurable execution points on monthly basis that these are the bunch of steps that will execute uh, this month and we need to look after it that if it was achieved or not and then go on to the next one till that time it is not measurable it will not be achieved there has to be number in terms of how many people within a city state region zone did we spread cyber security awareness can every organization put 25 questions as part of their promotion process i mean these are just 
ideas that I am bringing on the top. The moment you put cybersecurity as part of your promotion or increment or something of that sort, people will take it seriously. Otherwise, it is just on the check mark like we do audit. Uh, on the NCIC part, NCIPC part, um, the NCIPC is also doing its own activities. Uh, but again, uh, the SCADA part, I'm not aware of. They would be a better person. Uh, I'm not engaged with them officially, so uh, not appropriate for me to comment on that. Uh, why Maharashtra has become the most number of attacks? So Mumbai is the commercial capital of India. Uh, most number of industries are there. Uh, so obviously the ransom attack would be maximum there, but that doesn't state that a Chennai or a Bangalore or Hyderabad is not getting attacks. It's probably that we have not identified. So probably that is the reason. And the last point is how many states in India actually develop state level cybersecurity policy? Uh, uh, I don't know a single state who has a state level cybersecurity policy. But more than that, I am not even sure if the national cybersecurity policy exists. I mean, at least I have not seen it. So we can go to city, state. Gram Panchayat level later, but at a national level, there should be a piece of document, which at the moment doesn't exist. Thank you so much, sir. We have one more question. Uh, this is from AP Bhatnagar, sir. How does one identify a hacker? <laughs> You're looking at one, sir. So <laughs> how do you identify that? Actually, it's a very interesting question because I myself never thought about it. Uh, okay, let me put it like this, sir. In the cult of hacking, uh, is a very famous uh, proverb or uh, statement that what is the difference between a good hacker and a great hacker? A good hacker is someone that uh, you know, and a great hacker is someone that you will never, ever, ever know. So, and let's take our real life example. Do we know who are the real people behind uh, the attack on Ames? Do we know the real people who uh, attacked uh, Mumbai power grid, uh, Ladakh power grid, Aadhaar database? No. And let me take one more word, which would be painful. At least in my lifetime, we will never ever be able to identify them. We will not get a face and a name. We will not. So uh, identifying a hacker, uh, I mean, it's impossible unless those are cyber criminals and it's caught by the police and there is their photograph on the newspaper. Otherwise, it's next to impossible because the real success story lies in anonymity. Remain anonymous, continue the program, make money and then exit. Uh, thank you, sir. So I myself have a few basic questions. Yeah, sure. uh, so you mentioned about the AIMS cyber attack and other cyber attack, uh, attacks as well. So uh, these attacks com these attacks compromise the personal data of millions of patients, including the civil servants, the politicians. So I'd just like to know how can we ensure that in future these attacks like these does not continue? Is there a way that you, the cybersecurity can ensure that attacks like these cannot happen yeah. in the future so a couple of things uh, again uh, can now the budget is coming up can the government of india allocate certain amount of budget purely focused on cyber security when i say cyber security it would mean buying the latest of devices the equipments required the network devices the intrusion detection system prevention system and so on and so forth can that budget also ensure that a certain amount of human resources are allocated to it and some sort of an internal paper within the government saying that definition of legacy system. Why was AIMS using IT infrastructure that is 30 years old? Why was it never considered that we need to figure out and resolve this? Now I understand these are all cost-centered factors and cybersecurity is always seen or even IT is seen as an expense. But till that time, we don't take concrete steps. It's never going to happen. Two, today, you don't necessarily need to buy server. You can put things on the cloud. This I also see as an opportunity for NIC and few other organizations to up their ante, get into the latest of system, and probably also the offer the services to some of our smaller uh, neighbors. But 
till that time the legacy systems is not crushed till that time there is no definition within the government of what is it that we will call as legacy system and beyond this set of uh, timeline we will not use the older system it is not going to happen i am also aware that is easier said than done it is very complicated and difficult in government to push things up however if you don't do it uh, today it's aims attack tomorrow it's going to be something else and today 351 pm again repeating 2023 you will all of us will hear much bigger sophisticated cyber attacks and all of it is driven by the chinese specifically with regards to what's happening at the border level and few of the geopolitical uh, international relationship diplomatic policies that the current government is taking up okay sir so thank you so much uh, one more question uh, you also talked about aadhar so keeping in mind the increasing intensity of the cyber crime do you think it is safe to follow the notion of like digitalizing everything like our personal data and stuff yeah so uh so uh i will take a step back um step back. maybe a year or one and a half years back uh, there was a interview of nandan nilekani uh so nandan said some I mean, he is a positive person he is really trying to drive and bring contribution to the uh, national system so one of the examples that he gave is uh india is the only country where you get vaccinated and you get your certificate on your phone it's digitized and so on and so forth my friend in california went for uh, the vaccination and he got a piece of paper so uh what he was trying to convey is we are digitally way ahead of the curve than the us having said that can i also ask a counter question that with regards to cyber security where does india stand vis-a-vis the us or a china or a uk or a canada is india willing to open up a door to an international cyber security audit the answer is no because our situation is way something else as compared to the rest of the developed economies and till that time the defensive part of cyber is not taken care of there is too much of excitement in the system on offensive operations too much of excitement but that offensive operations is only as effective as the defensive mechanism in place because the moment we scale up our offensive capabilities the opposite party will hype and really ruthlessly focus on attacking us and most of the infrastructure is not in a position to take up such attacks and like again said the way to work is never ever the media or anybody should come to know that such an attack has happened just keep quiet keep stealing the data keep making sure that certain amount of malware is injected and the time comes they will make it active right so as i speak to you the imagination coming in my head is number of servers out there where bunch of malwares are just lying down as a dormant and when the time is up they will remotely get it active and the data starts flowing so um, i really hope and urge that some senior government uh, folks take this very very seriously uh, uh, because if you and i as we speak if there was no power power here it would not have happened this whole interaction would not have happened so uh, yeah it's a long long journey thank you sir uh, this is for our participants those who have raised your hands if you have any question you can put it in the chat box and if you want to ask any question please let me know i'll unmute you this is for the participants simran three of them have raised their hand yes. yeah if they want to ask a question i don't know okay uh yes uh so ma'am you can go ahead and ask your question 
NM uh, NM Prosti Sauron ma'am is here. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dominic. It is a very interesting uh, yes. presentation. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yeah. Uh, I have a, a question uh, that uh, uh, you you mentioned that um, uh, you don't see the government having a budget, government having a policy, and all that. A lot of uh, the points you raised towards uh, government. Uh, uh, still to do, still to act kind of thing. Sir. I'll not say that government inaction, but government still to act kind of yes, situation sir. we are in. Uh, now I'm uh, wanting to get some response from you as to what is your understanding about the huge IT uh, knowledge base, IT companies, IT uh, institutions, uh, all these things are there in India by which we have become the world's uh, largest power uh, yeah. te te technology power. Uh, yeah. How how they are doing in terms of uh, uh, undertaking is analysis of uh, uh, cyber security system uh, in India, what are the gaps, uh, what are the requirements, uh, so that uh, the action can be initiated by uh, people uh, in all fronts, not only government, but also the uh, knowledge institutions, uh, technology companies, technology associations, uh, like that. What is your perspective on that? So a couple of things here, uh, all the private sector companies. Uh, so let me start at different level. All majority of the startups in India, they uh, use services of Microsoft Azure, Google Enterprise Cloud, or Amazon Web Services. And all of these platforms are, from a cybersecurity point of view, quite secure. Also, the data is spread across the globe. So there cannot be one single cyber attack and the data is stolen. That is one. Having said that, it doesn't mean, like I said, it's impossible. Nothing is impossible, but it's extremely difficult. Point number one. That is from the startup point of view. Even large enterprises such as TCS, Infosys, Wipro, uh, Mindtree Consulting, uh, Accenture's of the world, Cognizant, they are all on the cloud and they put extra effort on cybersecurity because in their service level agreement SLA with their client, which in majority of the case is American nature, there are very strict timelines and points men mentioned on cybersecurity part. So they have internal team of uh, cybersecurity. They also have chief information security officers, majority of this organization. And some of them also have cybersecurity as a service. So they deploy a lot of uh, capital on annual basis periodically to ensure that it doesn't hit because all of these companies are also listed in the stock market. The moment a cyber attack story comes out in the media, it directly reflects on their balance sheet. So if I can use the word, their skin is in the game. So they don't want to lose this game. So they are very, very proactive. That is point number one. Point number two, uh, when a nation state attacks uh, organization, they have a certain outcome out of this. Like, for example, in Aadhaar and AIMS, it was clear-cut point case that we want to steal the data. We want to create havoc there. We want to show that we are capable of doing this. It's also for their internal test case that five years down the line, if you want to use a system, what will happen? They're also monitoring the news through newspaper articles and websites. They're doing a 360-degree effort. Whereas, if uh, the neighbors are trying to attack an Infosys or Wipro or a private company, that will have a different agenda and point of view. So till that time, the government doesn't define few aspects. What is the cybersecurity policy of India? What is the definition of legacy systems in the government circle? In terms of critical, inf critical information infrastructure, do we have to get a position called chief information security officer? Will they have IT security managers under them? Till the time the basic organization structure, designation, and all those things are not defined, it's a very, very long journey because if you ask any organization, sir, nobody will say that we are not doing anything. They will say that we are doing everything. But still, the, uh, the real output here states, states that the actual ground reality is something else. And uh, I was also sharing this with a very senior military official. Till that time, the military and the civilians do not trust the civilian exports, it is almost impossible to win the cyber challenge because the best exports are in the civilian ecosystem. 
not necessarily in the defense like in 30 years old you have to trust the civilians you have you can vet their background you can generally figure out who they are what is their background and stuff like that which is easiest for uh, the identified intelligence agencies in the country and then engage with them take baby steps measure it and then go to the next step third point sir is in any operation, any project that they take up, I personally urge and request them to be consistent. Please don't start a project with three month or a six month or a one year horizon in mind. The Chinese are doing it for 15 to 20 years to reach here. Can Indian agencies, designated authorities have at least five to 10 year horizon, assuming that it will not work, but we will not give up. A lot of projects, starts and in three to six months to eight months it's winded up and that is a problem then again you start from zero again there is an effort and in six to eight months it's winded up and this will not work another small point sir if the number of academies in the country from an nda to ota to naval academy to air force academy to the academy in the ia school to the uh, hyderabad police academy can somebody regularly go there and engage with these people that these are a bunch of things happening in the world of cybersecurity and you need to know about this. And then depending on the level of their absorption of knowledge, we can scale up the knowledge base as well. Till the time such focused approach doesn't take care, I mean, there is no magic wand here. Yeah, thank you. You said that, uh, but my question still remain un unanswered. Sir. Uh, 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 the, the point is that, okay, uh, you again, you highlighted the role of the government and the defense. Uh, sure. But uh, my perception is that our public system, non-defense, sure. non-defense public system is a huge risk right now. Uh, you, you gave example, uh, the, the health system, you sure. gave example of the power grid, your railway, uh, traffic, sure. even our personal data. These are all public systems which are non-defense, but yes, uh, 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 and to protect that against cyber threat, yes, sir. Uh, there should be collective action. And if we wait for government to act, uh, government will take uh, several years to understand it because sir. the bureaucrats need to understand, then only things will move. And making the bureaucrats understand, it's not easy. Uh, so although the efforts are going on, the persons like you are continuously telling them, explaining them and all that. But my point is that how these technology companies, technology institutions and technology knowledge institutions, the, 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 the academic institution, the training research institution, the technology associations, how all of them, which are non-government in nature or quasi-government in nature, how they can come together and uh, develop some kind of a comprehensive understanding of the need for cyber security uh, in the public system so that actions at multiple fronts can start. That's uh, my question. Fine, sir. I, will, I mean, uh, the, it's a very long, complicated space, but are the government, uh, are the academic institutions such as IITs really interested to get into this space? I am not sure if they are interested because I am somebody who spent quite amount of my lifetime early days in IIT Bombay. They are not interested. That is one. Point number two is give me five products that has come out of IITs in this country that is a commercial success. The answer is zero. It is a churning point where youngsters enroll and go to US. That to the older IIT system, the newer IIT system is struggling to even get their chiefs on board. So, and other public systems in place also are answerable to the government. So they are dependent on government for various things. Their, their, uh, their escape route is always, there is no notification or direction from the government. So we are waiting for it. I know these are not the appropriate answers for it. And I don't have answers for it because uh, the concerned government agency is supposed to take care of it. And as long as they are willing to engage if at all they find us worthy enough, we will be more than happy to go out of our way and help and support in every single way. But the first hand of uh, extension should come from them. Otherwise, then a lot of times I get into a soup of them questioning me that what is my intention in all these things? What is my intention? So I have reduced my engagement to the point that only when they come and ask, I give my best rest, uh, relax. 
Thank you, sir. Uh, there are other questions. Yes, please. Uh, now we have KM Singh, sir, with us. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, Dominic. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? Uh, fine, thank you. Uh, very informative talk. Thank you very much. Sir. Uh, I have a very funny question, peculiar question. Sir. Yes, sir. It's quite a bit of coincidence that just a few minutes before your talk, sir. I got a text message sir. from Indigo, Indigo yeah. uh, men men mentioning about some flight number. Hmm. And uh, that message was addressed to some Mahapatra. <laughs> Did you change your name, yes. sir? <laughs> now, I was quite surprised. So I very promptly rang up some very senior person in Digo sir. that how it has happened. Sir. And then uh, in midst, between your talk, I got a call from Indigo sir. that uh, this Mr. Mahapatra had logged in from my Indigo login number. Hmm. And so, so they have given it to my number because the, my uh, mobile number is logged in uh, Linking, with them. Yeah. yeah. Now, though, I want to know sir. that, first of all, my Indigo log login number is a confidentiality between me and uh, Indigo. Yes, sir. How has, how has Mahapatra got access to it? Yes. And who is accountable for this? Number one. Number two, uh, now that uh, some stranger has got my log Indigo login number, yeah. what are the risks involved? And what is the further course of action should I do? So, sir, so, uh, two, three quick microseconds, I can take this offline as well. But uh, if you can help me understand, when you put in the number, does it generate an OTP that comes to your mobile phone? No, no OTP came in my mobile number. No, sir. Normally, when you put in that number, do you have a password yeah. to log in? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And OTP comes. Yes, OTP comes. So that means this gentleman has also put in the password or something like that? That I have to ask because it was in between your talk. I no problem, sir. We'll that. take it offline. But my only quick uh, suggestion to you would be is to draft a, a email immediately and drop it to Indigo so that they can probe this. Immediately an email should go that something like this has happened. Screenshot of the SMS. It should immediately go to them because otherwise they will have the entire access of your past travel and future travel and all those things. So please hmm. drop an email to them on priority basis and the rest we can take offline, sir. Uh, that uh, of course, the moment I got that before you talk, sir. I have uh, I copy pasted that and sent to somebody senior up Indigo. That's sir. why the call came very promptly. Yes, sir. But, yes, sir. but now, uh, now, now, now I should make a formal complaint. Formal complaint and uh, the concerned IT team in the back end should check in the database that your name and your ID and all those things are appropriate and there is no. Uh, Debugging or malicious uh, bug putting in place. Um, should I also change my Indigo login number? What, uh, is that allowed? I don't know. Ha, uh -huh, sir. So uh, the best person would be them to guide you. But uh, so, please drop an immediate email because you mail today, they will reply after four days. <laughs> no, that I will ensure. I will talk to somebody yes, very high up. In it. But yeah, so, so because I wanted to know two things. Number one, the, the course of action that you have suggested. Yes, and sir. number two, what are the risks in, involved? They will the know my very simple, sir. The moment I have access to your, forget Indigo, any dashboard, I will get access to the entire history of your travel. Uh, I will have access to the payment that is done and the bank details in little bit of detail. Yeah. And after that, it's fig figment of my imagination plus a combination of social engineering to use it. Okay, I'll go ahead with that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Matthews. Uh, uh, Raj, Mr. Rajesh, sir, you can speak now. You can ask your question. Yes, am, I, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you are. Um, so I've put a question in the chat box. Um, is it all right for me to um, put it here by, by voice? Yeah, yeah, please. So you had uh, mentioned about, uh, you know, civilian participation and coordination with uh, members of the, you know, members who have hood on the uniform. Um, so you do understand that 
um, conventionally in any country, especially in a vibrant democracy, there, there is always a turf war between you know different domains. You know, the bureaucrats, the, yeah, you yeah, know, the yeah, elected representatives, civil society, etc. So that takes time. So deliberating on that, even on a non-digital platform, in conventional platforms, in ministries, etc. The you know interagency coordination, etc. That it, it comes with this share of challenges, which um, you know the other retired officers and yourself really understand. Now. Yes. Obviously, mitigating that and you know coming with a new framework in the digital format, in digital space, it's it's got. It, don't you think that you know we need some kind of innovation that can be cross disciplinary, transdisciplinary, and perhaps um, you know um, bring down the threshold of um, you know commercial barriers as you just mentioned. You know there are high end graduates, you know highly gifted young men and women. They travel abroad for you know greener pastures, but. The fact that we need something now, we need something now with and it's, it's what media reports if they're in the public domain. But as you very well know, and you know, there are some things that the media just cannot report, as you rightfully say, it should, it should not come in the public domain. But is there something that you know members of the strategy community, um, civil society, um, a gentleman like you can deliberate as a form of a back channel, um, you know, similar to a back channel track to mechanism that happens in the neighborhood periphery in other capitals? Can we do it internally and some sort of a blueprint where there is a way out? Because if there can be multiple endless discussions, there are deliberations, conferences, seminars, workshops, Zoom meetings, but a blueprint, a solid blueprint that is tangible, that can just need, you know, that war warrant in, you know, investment, monetary resources, perhaps from the private sector, accredited, trusted sources, civilian participation, an uh, interagency coordination that can be bypassed somehow, you know, something innovative, something out of the box. But yet, without public glare, without public attention, especially the media. So, is this something that can be taken up? Not, I don't, yes. I really don't expect an answer, but something that can be no, taken no, up. I can give an answer. So, first thing first on the turf war, uh, I'll take the liberty of uh, sharing that I'm the first Indian who trained NTRO in 2006, 17 years back. Those days, I used to hear the same saga of turf war. Uh, if I can take the liberty of quoting PC Halda, sir. From his career lifetime, he can write a book and book and essay on tough war. Currently, we are in 2023. We are discussing tough war. Probably when I'm 80 years old, we'll be discussing tough war. The point is, where will it stop? Tough war is great, not just for us, even for our neighbors. That is point number one. So let's keep doing the tough war business and let's lose focus. It is never going to help anybody except our neighbors. Second point, with regards to the paper that you mentioned, I will take the liberty of sharing with you that there has been multiple papers written by some of the topmost experts in the subject, including Indian Americans, Indian Canadians, Indo-Europeans, which has gone to the toppest of so-called authority in the cybersecurity domain, but it is either lying in some drawer in some room somewhere, or they have read and they have convinced over multiple rounds of cup of hot tea and coffee that we will get back to you on this. And we are still waiting for that getting back, back wala part, which is just 17 years old now. And frequently, whenever a new officer sits on the top chair, the protocol is so I lost you. So we lost you. I, I think um, I lost audio. I believe we have lost our speaker. I think he'll be back with us in a couple of minutes. Because of the weather, it goes Yeah, most probably due to due to the weather. Um, ma'am, um, we are following Chetanya's rules. Is here, isn't it? It is not mentioned in the invitation, but I'm, I'm sure there are certain modes applicable. So you are not audible properly. Can I repeat my question? Am I audible now? No. Uh, no, sir, you are not. Can I put my question in the chat box? Yes, sir, please do that. Yeah. Thank you, sir.
Simran, can you hear me? You're on mute, I think. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Sorry, uh, there was a power cut. Yeah, my apologies. Okay, no problem. Sir. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, to the concern, uh, sir, who was asking this, my point is uh, there are many reports like that. I have even repeatedly uh, given my best in reaching out to various uh, officials at certain national cyber security coordinator's office, uh, the concerned office in the three armed forces. Uh, the meeting always goes well, but after the meeting, there is no follow up or any measurement on that front. So my entire effort now is to uh, engage with like minded people and uh, as a startup, as an enterprise, spread the messaging through uh, colleges, universities and corporates as a skill program. And end of the day, this is also a problem statement on skill part. If the skill uh, problem statement is resolved, and if as an enterprise, we can build India as a global capital for cybersecurity skills, then by default, I think somewhere or other, the government will also take us seriously and engage with us. So if I make a caveat to my question. Yes, please. So with reference to what you just said, it's incredible what you just said, but then the challenge there would be still the conventional problem of such a trained manpower in the civilian you know, the framework, in the civil society framework, Yes. They would still have to be deployed in a manner that can mitigate challenges from the neighborhood, right? So for that, we need some kind of, uh, you know, a threshold breakage where uh, the men, in, you know, the, um, uh, the uniformed uh, officials and uh, elected representatives come to a conclusion that, yes, they can be included uh, for such deployment. Else, uh, where will the manpower, where will the skill be used? Where, yeah, so it's very simple for us. So as far as I am concerned, as somebody who is uh, uh, driving a cybersecurity skill organization is, we are reaching out to uh, young college pass out and people up to 15 to 20 year of work experience who want to build a career in cybersecurity, get them placed in various organizations and uh, parallelly engage with the government for cybersecurity awareness program, cybersecurity skill program. Because the idea is till that time our youth doesn't get a proper career job, uh, this problem statement will not be resolved because uh, in the government, uh, a lot of them are not necessarily interested in a topic like this unless they are asked to listen to us. So, so perhaps and, and my on question was misinterpreted. Uh, so perhaps my question was misinterpreted. I was not clear. Can I communicate once more? Can I attempt to communicate? Yes, please. Yes, more? please. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so w when I use the keyword deployment. See, for example, an attack from someone like the, the word that you used, great hacker, who would never be caught in your lifetime and in ours, um, which I beg to differ, I mean, we can. Um, the deployment. Okay, has in that to case, uh, what is the. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh, of the number of several attacks that has happened on India from the Chinese side, how many of them have been identified in the past 10 years? Sir, uh, my reading, personal reading is limited to uh, select limited. Yeah, so the point again is it will not be caught till the time that I, getting, uh, identifying and pinpoint the person on the other side, especially somebody is not in the country itself. It's very difficult, but that is not the challenge here. That my, The way I am looking at this problem statement is, can we do set of steps to take care of India cybersecurity infrastructure? That is one. And two, right. for me as a startup and as an enterprise, can we build a very reliable ecosystem of uh, cybersecurity skill set boys and girls who can build a great career out of this? Also, because there are approximately 1.5 million jobs available in the Indian ecosystem. And a lot of them will, by default, will also go for government services. Because when I was talking to some folks in the forensic space, cyber forensic space, they were sharing with us that uh, there are so many cases coming out of the Indian courts but is not getting resolved with regards to the uh, skill problem uh, amongst the forensics university right now to tackle cybersecurity skill problem. So that's how I'm uh, focused on this part. But uh, on the larger question of civil society coming together and doing things, I really don't have an answer for that. But if there is any small role that I can play, I'll be more than happy, sir, to uh, give my contribution. I understand. I, understand. I, got, I got your point. Um, this is the last, uh, it's the last question as a supplement if I have time. A short question. Yeah, please ask. 
So suppose, uh, let's say a recent um, mainline hospital in um, here in NCR that, we, that you just mentioned, and it's been there in the media for a short while. Let's say someone who is not accredited and recognized by elected representatives or um, the, the um, um, uniformed personnel, I have, or let's say an individual, a citizen has a solution, but bringing or deploying the solution in a framework that can be effectively used for neutralizing such a, a future, um, such, a, um, such an incoming uh, offense, is that feasible when there is no credible framework where such people can be included and you know they're looked at with suspicion they are looked at with um, you know a lot of um, a lot of doubts you know because people are boxed that okay he is he or she is not from x or y domain or ecosystem therefore how can we you know is that sort of a space that um, with reference with reference to what you just said about young men and women entering the government service, yes, that's absolutely brilliant. Training them, deploying them in the government service, deploying them in, private, in the private sector, yes. But what if, you know, someone like you, let's say you have a solution and you just mentioned that you have tons of ideas in your hair and you're trained, you're gifted, and you're committed to the country. But suppose, you know, rather than drafting papers and submitting to the papers, that you want to deploy your skills, saying that I can solve this, give me a system, give me a server, give me something bigger, let me enter that room and solve this for you. Would you be able to do it? That's my question. So a so couple of points. I, as a startup, and my ad advice to some of the companies that I am on the board as an advisor or a promoter or a shareholder in some of the other very high-tech company, the first piece of advice that I give all the founders is never ever in your lifetime engage with the government. They will take all your advice. They will even give you project, but it will take 10 to 20 years to clear your fund and have real life cases where a bunch of veterans from the Navy and the Air Force, they have built some of the state-of-the-art technology products, given it to the government, and approximately five to eight crores is pending right now since 2019. So engaging government as a client is a strict no-no. That doesn't mean that we don't want to do it. If the processes improve, if the payment processes improve, more than happy to engage with them. Otherwise, the whole world is open from a private sector to a lot of other sector to build really credible enterprises. So from a client point of view, I'm not sure if the government would be a great uh, customer, especially from the payment point of view, because for a startup, the entire oxygen is all about getting payment on time and not wait for three to four years, especially when the payment is half a million dollar and above. That is point number one. Point number two is uh, how much the government themselves are serious about uh, deploying this uh, solution, either as a consultant or an advisory and stuff, things like that. Third, uh, from a cybersecurity point of view, or even from the technology skill sets point of view, if the concerned boy or girl is really talented, then it really won't make a difference for them to prove their skill sets. They can say that this is what I bring on the table. And then it's up to you to engage with me if you want my service or not, because end of the day, the government decides if I want to engage with person A or B or C. So, uh, and, I, and I understand the, the gist of your question because I have myself gone through these things where I am getting interrogated by officers asking my intention and my uh, motive behind uh, enthusiastic uh, coming around and offering solutions and all those things. But uh, it is for the government to decide what is the path that they want to take for next few years and who are the bunch of people that they want to work with. We are out here with open hand, uh, willing to work with them, but it is the authority that be on the current uh, year or the current day, they decide that with whom they want to engage. So that's my point uh, take. However, I and a bunch of other folks are more than happy and willing to help and support in every single way possible for us. That's an open invitation. The rest is, I leave it to the authorities and people in power. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, I have one more question. Sir, is cybersecurity responsible for safeguarding the state and individual only from the outside threat or to safeguard the individual from the state as well? For example, what if the state itself uses data for surveillance over its citizens? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And I have a fair idea of who's framed this question also. But... Um, so let's take a direct example of Pegasus. 
so what will bunch of us do when the power to be uses a very powerful sophisticated malware what we all commonly known as pegasus on us and the answer is we cannot do anything about it because at the first step we won't even know that uh, it is deployed in my device right so uh, first and foremost is the uh, dispensation in power uh, responsible absolutely yes when they take oath they take oath of protecting all of us in every aspect however when they deployed themselves and that to using agency that is a couple of miles away not that the capability was not available in the country but for various strategic reasons they uh, selectively chose a specific country and using their skill sets on this so uh, it is very unfortunate however um, identifying such uh, malware in the device is extremely difficult because at the first step these things doesn't even come to our mind that something of this sort has uh, happened however there are some small small things that one can think of like for example if the phone is getting too hot or if the percentage of battery gets drained out quite quickly and things like that but when when a very sophisticated malware is deployed then it's next to impossible unless some forensic audit is done and leaks out but yes the powers to be uh, they are well within their uh, constitutional right after they take oath that they protect all of us uh, fairly and rightfully and not deploy such malware into our devices because we are a threat to them i, I mean uh, i mean i would love to i mean uh, if i can take 30 seconds more i would love to see the current dispensation deploy pegasus in the entire chinese government ecosystem and that would be something but the challenge is their ecosystem is so well grid uh, built on uh, mandarin and cantonese that it will take quite amount of effort and strength and focus to do the same right uh thank you so much sir a uh, one last question sir due to increase in digitalization we can also see the increase in the digital crime or cyber crime against yes. women in fact yes. with children as well so is Absolutely. there a way to curb it or control it correct so yeah that's a very good question so one of the things i am looking at uh, to build over number of years uh, as an entrepreneur myself is aggressively push women into the space of cyber security push women uh, to build career in cyber security uh, create special ecosystem and hand holding uh, career road map for women to uh, reach to the point of chief information security officer in various organization because uh it is quite uh, my experience and of also some of my colleagues experience that women bring in a lot of value add uh, in any ecosystem especially cyber security that is one two uh this also is directly related to the amount of opportunity that we will get to spread the world uh, word across uh, university colleges institutions that cyber security works in this manner and there is a great opportunity for you to build a career in cyber security if you do not want to build a career in cyber security please make sure that these 20 points are the best practices when you surf or do a financial transaction on your mobile phone ipad tablets laptop please make sure that these 20 points are always followed and if this messaging can be pushed consistently periodically because you read it once and after four weeks you forget about it so if this can be repeatedly made to push into them either through the banking network or various payment gateways or the various websites then uh, probably one year two year down the line we can see some uh, behavior change because end of the day this about behavior how people uh, carelessly surf the internet thinking that they will not be caught but uh, yeah there is uh, history and tracks for everything to uh, identify what people have been doing online so uh, again i mean the easier way to say this awareness 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 push more people into building career in cyber security very seriously and uh, from there on they themselves become the ambassador of spreading the word Okay thank you so much sir 
with this we we have come to an end of today's session i would once again like to thank our speaker for a very informative and intriguing session thank you sir for taking out your time out from your busy schedule and joining us also i would like to thank all the participants for making this a very interactive session so thank you everybody for joining us thank and you. if i may add pp maybe i am taking the liberty ppf in 2023 should consider building a a uh, dash dash chair for cyber security and we will build a cyber security research enterprise in ppf and i'll be more than happy to push myself and help you in every single way thank you thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you have a great day and thank you for the opportunity thank you so much can i exit yes sir sure thank you and for out